crazy, crazy, crazy week of football again. Oh, man. And we're already at week seven. Week six was good. Week seven is going to be so much better, man. So much better. Uh, weekend football is the best. I love it. Seriously, cannot wait for today's games as well. And there's a few upsets I see flaring up as well. So I will get into those, obviously. We'll get into the ones last week, though. Uh, I think there was... There was no uh, Friday night games. There was no Saturday morning games either. So the first game kicked off at the Etihad. That was Manchester City versus Nottingham Forest. Now, despite Man City being down to 10 men, they are always, always, always going to beat Nottingham Forest. Rodri obviously getting sent off, which um, didn't too, do too great for my fantasy football team. But um, throughout the whole game, Man City pretty much bossed it from start to finish. Even when going down to 10 men, it just seems very, very seamless for them. Um, to kind of go through the motions and obviously at will sort of go through the gears. Um, very, very easy three points for them. Ended up winning 2-0 over a very, very poor Nottingham Forest, I thought. Forest didn't really give a good account of themselves um, against City. Um, City literally at will just decided to obviously flex a little bit of muscle. Arl Erling Haaland on the score sheet again, of course, which seems to be like a formality every single time he touches pitch. Um, Crystal Palace versus Fulham. Um, hmm. Selhurst Park, not much we can say about that one, to be quite honest. Ended up finishing 0-0. Not too much goal math action in that one. I, I, I expected at least a couple of goals, um, one on each side, because obviously Palace and Fulham do like to play sort of quick counters, uh, especially through the middle of the pitch. Um, but none of that yielded. Uh, Defence is obviously on top. Uh, clean sheets for both clubs, which is obviously very, very good. Um, but it, all in all, not the best game. Um I thought Palace should have had enough to beat Fulham. Um, but no, Fulham gave a really decent account of themselves um, by not conceding. Um, so I guess you can call that a very good point for them. Decent point for Palace um, as well. Uh, Luton Town versus Wolverhampton. That was the first point uh, of the new campaign for Luton um, against a really, really decent Wolves outfit. It looked like last week. Um, Wolves down to 10 men as well. Uh, and Luton pretty much battled back from that point onwards. Um, got their point, got the penalty, um, and Carlton Morris, uh, for his second goal of the season, uh, nicked a, a valuable uh, point for Luton. So they're currently off the mark at the moment in the Premier League. Brentford 1, Everton 3. That was one of the shocks of the weekend last week. Now, Brentford strike me as one of those teams that they don't necessarily sign players to elevate them. They're signing players to kind of keep them where they're at. Um, there's nothing about Brentford that tells me at the moment that um, they're going to finish anything above sort of 11th, 10th, 11th. Um, and it showed against a really, really disappointing Everton side up until last week. Um, Dominic Calvert-Lewin on the score sheet for Everton. Everton actually surprisingly were very, very good and very direct. They've kind of gone back to basics of, you know, what Sean Dyche is all about. Um, and it yielded. It yielded a lot of fruit for them. Um, obviously, midweek, uh, Everton won again. Um, another game, I think it was at, was it Aston Villa? Something like that. I think it might have been Villa. Yeah, I think it was Aston Villa. Everton ended up um, going through to the next round there as well. So, they're in a, they're in a decent run of form. A um, couple of games on the bounce now um, have yet to uh, uh, take uh, defeat. Uh, but that was Everton's first win of the season as well. Um, so, that's obviously helped them climb out of the relegation zone where they were uh, since the start of the season. As for Brentford... They need Ivan Tony back in quickly. Um, Brian and Bermo and Joran Wissa, who started the season off very, very well, having scored a goal in the past four, I believe it is now. So, um, yeah, trying times for Brentford at the moment, and they're conceding a lot at the moment as well. So maybe it's a little bit of a rut, but uh, very un Brentford like, especially with Thomas Frank at their home there. Uh, that was at the G Tech Power Stadium, by the way, as well. Turf Moor, this was a Saturday night kickoff, Burnley versus Manchester United. I had uh, Burnley to actually take this one um, due to the fact that, you know, under the lights, Turf Moor, really, really tight pitch. Um, and actually, Burnley should have won the game. The problem with Burnley is they don't have a goal scorer uh, or someone that's going to put the ball in the back of the net as consistently as they need, especially in this league. It's very, very unforgiving. United obviously have individuals that can win them the game, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, Bruno Fernandes ended up getting on the score sheet. Um, Really sloppy game, though. Really, really sloppy game from both sides. Not just from um, Man United, but from Burnley as well. I was expecting a bit more. Um, from, of course, from what I saw, it was just looked like one of those games that could have sort of, you know, gone uh, back and forth. But it was just very, very, very messy. 
Um, but winning ugly three points and United have another uh, three points uh, in the bag and uh, we'll go into this week very very confident especially after their midweek dispatching of Crystal Palace in the Carabao Cup uh, Chelsea nil Aston Villa won that was at Stamford Bridge uh, another red card um, for Gusto the right back uh, for Chelsea um, Aston Villa scoring through Ollie Watkins is, I think that was his first goal of the season in the league yeah, I think that was his first goal in six. Um, which is strange because he was on fire last season. Um, but yeah, Aston Villa going there, very resolute. Um, Aston Villa could do this to you. They've got a really, really decent base. Um, defensively, obviously without Tyron Ming, but they do have Pau Torres in there um, and next to Esri Konza. And when they are on bits, Aston Villa are very, very difficult to break down. And Chelsea aren't one of those teams that's going to batter you and pepper you with shots all game. They're not that... Chelsea don't seem to have an identity at the moment, especially Pochettino at the helm at the minute. He's trying to implement something, just doesn't have the players to do it, which sounds crazy to me considering they spent about a billion pounds on um, this squad. It doesn't look like an, a billion pound squad, to be fair. It looks like a 50 million pound squad with a couple of sprinkles of decency in, in Sterling and um, a couple of others. But Chelsea are bad. They are bad. I think I used the word midweek. Chelsea are putrid at the moment. Um... And Aston Villa went there. It was very, very easy for them. Um, really good goal from Watkins as well. And Chelsea just had no answer for it. So a uh, value of three points for Aston Villa. And I don't see this getting any better for Chelsea either, which we'll go into a little bit later. Super Sunday kicked off with the North London derby. Obviously, my beloved Spurs uh, going to Arsenal. Uh, I believe it's two wins in the last 30 there. Um, so obviously it's, it's not a place we go to um, with very fond memories, but we gave a good account of ourselves. I thought it was a brilliant North London derby, one of the best North, North London derbies I've seen in a long time. Both teams are kind of at a level where they can sort of boast, you know what, we can go into any game and actually feel like we could beat anybody. And in my opinion, Arsenal got very lucky. As soon as Declan Rice went off, I thought we should have went for the jugular and we didn't quite do that. Um, Son scoring twice for, for us, obviously. Saka scoring um, a penalty and then obviously the first goal was an own goal from his shot. Christian Romero uh, on goal that was. But um, very, very good game. Very tidy game. Obviously, the first sort of 10, 15 minutes, we were very, very untidy with the ball. We did give it away on a few occasions. Madison got picked um, on his own sort of penalty spot, if you like. And Jesus really, really should have made it 2-0. Um, and that's what let us back in. Um, after that, James Madison sent Saka for a hot dog um, in the stand. Um, and yeah, I think that was the last we saw of Saka the whole game after that, to be fair. Uh, Madison put it on the plate for Son. Son with a very, very, very tasty finish. Um, and then, yeah, got the penalty. Saka dispatched that after Christian Romero um, handball, which I personally believe shouldn't be given because you're on your knees. How are you supposed to fall with your arms down by your side? That doesn't make sense. Um, but they gave the penalty for handball against Romero. Saka dispatched. Literally within about 40 seconds, uh, Spurs went down the other end. Madison nicking the ball off Jorginho, um, setting in Son and Son with a left foot finish, right foot finish, sorry, uh, into the bottom corner uh, for 2-2. Uh, good draw. Um, and I do see um, contrasting results for both of those two sides this weekend, which we'll go into uh, in a little bit. Liverpool 3, West Ham United 1. That was from Anfield. Uh, West Ham's great run to the season has come to a screeching halt, obviously having lost the last week as well. Um, but they'll get back on the side of West Ham. They've got a very, very good squad and very capable of obviously picking up results. Uh, Liverpool just seem to be doing what they were doing a couple of years ago, um, kind of just smashing through the press, uh, bypassing midfields very, very quickly, getting the ball out wide and obviously creating overloads in the middle, um, which is obviously how they're getting most of the goals. Salah's become more of a creator now. Then a goal scorer, Darwin Nunes, seems to have found his feet. He's scoring quite frequently as well. They've got really, really good balance with Luis Diaz on the left-hand side also. Dominic Shabozlai looks like an inspired signing along with McAllister in the middle. Um, and Endo will obviously find his feet in that midfield as well as Graven Birch, um, who's kind of sort of, you know, breathed in and out. Uh, sort of cameo appearances at the moment. Had a very, very, very good midweek, um, Graven Birch as well, uh, for Liverpool's win over Leicester. Um, but really good win for Liverpool, second in the league at the moment to Manchester City, still unbeaten, as well as Manchester City, Arsenal and Spurs. Um, but I do see uh, a different result for Liverpool this weekend as well. Brighton versus Bournemouth. 
a really, really uh, easy formality win for Brighton, who actually um, went a goal down um, against Bournemouth in that one. But Brighton obviously then rose to the occasion. Kairou Matoma, man of the match in that game. Very, very good finishes from a man um, that hasn't been in form for the best part of about six months. Um, but Matoma is one of those players I love. I love Matoma. I, I personally would like Matoma at Spurs, to be honest. If we can have him now, absolutely fine. If we were to replace him with Son, absolutely fine. I think he's he's a class act, Matoma, to be honest. Um, I'd love to see him at a club bigger than Brighton. But where he's at at the moment, Brighton are doing very well, um, as it showed uh, last week. 3-1 win. I didn't actually see the game physically, but obviously caught up with the highlights and obviously saw what um, Matoma did. Very, very, very good player and very, very good side Brighton. Our Brighton currently sitting third in the league at the moment, just above Spurs um, and going very well, picking up from last season. Uh, Sheffield United versus Newcastle. That was from Bramall Lane. It ended Sheffield United nil, Newcastle 8. Uh, Newcastle breaking all types of records on this day. Uh, I think they gave Sheffield United their biggest ever loss at home. Newcastle, that was their biggest ever win away. Newcastle also had eight different goal scorers on the day as well, um, which is unheard of in the Premier League. That's the first time that's ever happened. It's That's exactly what it says on the tin, to be quite honest. Newcastle went there and absolutely battered Sheffield United. Absolute them, tore them a new one. Every single um, bit of, of, you know, anything that you could use, you know, with regards to a beating, a lynching, uh, licks, a beatdown. Uh, yeah, it was it was all of the above. It was all of the above. Sheffield United really didn't have a prayer. Um, didn't really have any answers to what Newcastle were doing. Every time Newcastle got on the ball, it was literally just straight attack get down the flanks, get the ball into the middle, someone in there is going to finish it. And so it proved pretty much all game. Um, tough times for Sheffield United at the moment. Like I said, they're one of my three teams to go down and obviously nothing that they did last week is going to make me change my mind. But again, I don't mind it. I was at the, the Sheffield United Spurs game a couple of weeks ago and Sheffield United literally um, shithoused themselves um, to a 1-0 uh, a deficit up until the sort of 96th minute because of their shithousery in the game. So I, it couldn't happen to a nicer club, to be quite honest. I do hope they go down with less points than Derby did when they came up that year. So that's the roundup of match week six. We'll go into the um, predictions of game week seven, and we've got some cracking games today, including one uh, at 12.30, Aston Villa versus Brighton from Villa Park. I'm going to predict a draw in that one. Um, there's a boost on at the moment. Kairu Matoma um, is evens to have a shot on target in the game. And I think that's a really, really decent uh, return off a of fiver as well. Um, Aston Villa, I do believe, are going to get a draw here. Uh, it's going to be 2-2. A um, couple of goals um, in it. None of the teams are good enough defensively at the moment. Even though Villa, I did say, when they're on it, they, they can look to obviously keep clean sheets. But this is one of those games where I think Brighton do get a bit of luck. But I do think Brighton will keep the door open at the back as well, depending on, the you know, if Lewis Dunk is even fair. I'm not even sure. Haven't even seen. But I will go 2-2 there. Uh, leading into the three o'clock games today, the first one is from Old Trafford. Man United versus Crystal Palace. I, based on what I saw midweek, Crystal Palace's his team is not going to be too dissimilar. Uh, to the one that got beat handsomely 3-0 um, at Old Trafford. They're there again today, and I'm going to go with another Man United win. I will say 2-1 to Man United there. I think Anthony is now back uh, in contention to be picked um, after, obviously, his ordeal, which is still ongoing. They're still being investigated at the minute as well. Um, but he's back in the squad, Anthony, today. I think they are without Martinez, though. He's picked up a new injury and should be out for about two to three months, they're saying. Uh, Rafa Varane should be back. Uh, obviously, Luke Shaw is out. Uh, Regulon is out as well. So it remains to be seen what the left side of Man United's defence is going to look like. Will they go Amrabat again? Or will they try to put Diogo Dallo over the other side, um, if, providing he's fit as well, because he's had fitness issues also. Uh, Palace, I don't really see much changing. Ezzy will probably come back in. Are you probably go back out to the wide and they'll probably bring Edward or Mateta in up top to give him more of a bit of a physical presence. But I don't see Crystal Palace doing much more um, than scoring one goal. Um, and I see Man United running out winners 2-1 here. Newcastle versus Burnley. St. James's Park. Formality victory for me for Newcastle. I will go 2-0 here. Uh, Eddie Howe obviously up against his former club. 
Um, he's predicting that uh, Burnley are going to come uh, with a lot of zest, but I do believe Newcastle have enough to beat him. Apparently, there's injury uh, concerns over Isak and Callum Wilson. Um, I predict both of them are going to be fit, and I do think Callum Wilson is going to start this game today. Uh, Wolverhampton versus Manchester City. That's live for Molyneux. Um, last time uh, Manchester City went to Wolves, they absolutely dominated proceedings and smashed them to pieces from what I remember. And I think Kevin De Bruyne went there once and got a hat-trick. I see the same kind of trend happening. Um, Manchester City will go there. Erling Haaland is my captain this week in my fantasy football team and I am going to be picking triple captain this week as well for him as I do see him getting two plus goals there. Um, Bournemouth versus Arsenal is where my first shock is coming from. Arsenal go in there with a lot of injuries. I think I read that they've got injuries to Trossard, they've got injuries to Saka, injuries to Saliba, injuries to Rice... Uh, injuries to Martinelli, I believe, and obviously injury to Party as well, who was obviously injured throughout the season regardless anyway. Um, tough times for them at the moment. Um, and Bournemouth uh, will be full of uh, zest and energy, especially um, at the Vitality, where they've actually played really well this season. Um, I see a Bournemouth 1-0 win. Um, I think Bournemouth are going to score and then they're going to sit on it. I just don't think Arsenal have enough about them up top to obviously trouble them, especially without the likes of Martinelli and Saka. Gabriel Jesus is not necessarily a finisher. I think he'll be easy to be passed around the defence. Um, if they're focused, then they keep him out of the game. I do see Bournemouth um, yielding three points today. So that's where my guess is going. West Ham versus Sheffield United. That is from the London Stadium. Uh, again, another formality victory They're here. West Ham United are going to get back on the horse. Another three points for them against a very, very disappointing Sheffield United side. I will go West Ham 3, Sheffield United 0. Jared Bowen to be on the score sheet for me here, as well as James Ward-Prowse. Uh, Everton versus Luton. Everton obviously picked up a little bit of form, as I stated before. Uh, Luton Town obviously picking up their first uh, point last week, and I do see Everton running out 2-0 winners here. Dominic Calvert-Lewin on the score sheet for me again uh, for this one. Uh, then we go into the evening kickoff. My beloveds are in, um, in, uh, in action again. Uh, we go against Liverpool, and I think we're going to beat them. I am going to go 3-2 here because there's always goals with uh, Spurs and Liverpool. Um, Liverpool are actually beating us every single... No, they haven't. Sorry, they've drawn a couple. But they've actually... Uh, they're unbeaten at our new stadium since we've um, since we've had it. I don't think we've been um, very good in the last few years against them. I think the two all draws were one of note, which was like, you know what? We actually did quite decent there. But every other time we've been so, 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 so bad. And I do see us winning this. Ange Postacoglu has us playing a certain style of football, which I love. Um, our midfield is very, very, very strong. It is stronger than Liverpool's at the moment. Liverpool probably have more tech, but we're, physically we're stronger than them. Um, and I do see Yves Basuma and uh, Pat Matasar absolutely dominating McAllister um, and Endo. Um, so Bosley will probably sort of um, do a, a sort of number 10. He'll have a free roll so he can obviously go anywhere he'd, he'd want to go. Obviously, Mo Salah is the uh, main uh, protagonist here as well for them in order to get goals. But Son Hyun Min, I do see scoring as well. James Madison is going to have the game of his life. I think tonight he'll be very, very instrumental to what we do. And also keep an eye out for Kulusevski. I think he's due a massive game. And I think this is the game, especially under the lights at home, where uh, he sort of turns the corner and becomes the coolie we first got when he first joined the club. Tottenham 3, Liverpool 2 for me on that one. Super Sunday, I believe, is Nottingham Forest versus Brentford. Um, Nottingham Forest at home, I'd probably back them to do Brentford 2-1. To be fair, Brentford are not in a good run of form at the moment, and I don't really see that changing too much. Uh, Brentford have stop scoring and I'll concede in too many and Tyro Awanyi I believe will get onto the score sheet there as well to keep up his goal scoring form um, and then Monday night football we go to Craven Cottage for a West London derby Fulham versus Chelsea that's another three points for Fulham for me uh, Chelsea are just not good at the moment I know they got a win midweek against a very very weak Brighton but Premier League is a different kettle of fish and Fulham will be up for this, especially under the lights again. Craven Cottage, um, very, very tight pitch. Chelsea don't like to be challenged much and Fulham are going to go in all guns blazing. I do see a, a Polina yellow card in that game as a formality, of course, but I also do see Fulham uh, scoring a couple and I'll have my money on Willian uh, to put the ball in the back of the net against his former club. That's my roundup. Um... We'll do a, another video uh, probably next week, Friday. Um, oh, actually, hang on. There's one more game here. Luton versus Burnley. 
That's taking place on Tuesday. So after Monday Night Football, we've got one of the game after. It's Tuesday evening. The Luton versus Burnley. This was the game that was supposed to be played in match week two, which obviously couldn't go ahead because Luton Stadium wasn't ready. But I'm going to go with a Luton Town victory here. I think Luton are going to win this game. Um, first win of the season against a very, very resolute Burnley side. But I think Luton have enough about them to get the three points here. And I will go with a 2-1 Luton Town win. That is now officially my roundup finished. Um, like I said, we'll do another video next week, Friday, where I'll obviously do the roundup of this week's games. And then we'll talk about the games midweek, uh, um, next weekend after. But have a good weekend, people. Enjoy the games. Uh, and I'll see you next week in a bit.